Another mini app for me to review? Yes, sir, but this one has something special. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. That's right, my friends. New to the scene, the Ampapa D1 Bluetooth digital amplifier with the VU meter displays that are selectable. How cool is that? We're going to find out. Now, this amplifier is just being released as of October 2025 at a price of $199.97. I'll leave links in the video description below so you can pick one up. The sample was sent to me by Duke Audio, but you guys know I will give you a full review. So let's find out what's inside the package and let y'all listen to this cool track. Yo. The, kingpin of the, the unboxing experience here was pretty premium. They did a great job with this. No distortion around. Uh. Class D hit a TPA runs deep. Bluetooth five or two connection steady, no leak. Mini amp flex RCA in the chest. Finding post gripping ain't no contest. Swappable lot amps, flavors on deck. Rubicon caps make the tone perfect. Load the the power supply is GAN gallium nitride, and it uses this material instead of silicon, allowing for more compact, lighter, and efficient power conversion. The remote uses two AAA batteries, but as you can imagine, batteries are not included. Command at my seat, sounds so sweet, got the block on repeat. Preamp out. Got the stack looking me. Oh. Microfiber cloth included to remove those nasty fingerprints from the screen. So tight. Oh. This ain't just sound, this is audio delight. RGB lights flash, a disco in the dark. Crisp pies, deep blows, and Papa leaves a mark. Oh, yeah. Wireless remote, got the world on my palm. Every beat, every note, a soothing bomb. And Papa D1, one power below. Oh. Lights RGB, like the club on the floor. Oh. I'd like to think they got this glass top panel from Car Audio the way they do it with amplifiers showing off the guts. Very smart idea to be able to get to your op amps. Rubicon's loyal, no cap in the cap. Swappable lock amps, keep the flavor on tap. Swinging meters, pulse with the vibe. OLED screen, got the world hypnotized. Let's move on to the features and specs of this amplifier. First, the volume selector here is on the right. It's a multifunction encoder. Also, we have the OLED screen. It includes the display options. We'll get into those here in a minute. And yeah, it's just very clean looking across the front. No frills, no buttons, no really nothing other than the one encoder. And here on the back, we have the other pieces of business, including the speaker outputs as well as the inputs and also an adjustment knob which we will talk about. First, let's take off these little covers. Then we can see all the things on the back, including the preamp output here, which is a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, which sends full range signal output. Below that is a 12 volt trigger input, which I assume is something with a future product from Ampapa. Also above that, RCA inputs. These are the auxiliary inputs. And below that, we have TRS inputs, which are balanced for your high end inputs. Bluetooth antenna connector here is on the left. We'll show it screw in the antenna shortly. And then below that is the high pass filter, 12 dB per octave, zero to 200 Hertz. This is pretty cool for a mini amp because it will protect your small satellite speakers from the bass getting to them. On the right side on the back, we have the binding posts. These are for the speaker outputs and accept banana plugs. And on the far right, we have the DC power input for the 24 to 48 volt DC input. In addition to the clean look on the front panel, when we fly over the top here, you'll notice there is a clear glass panel on the top, which will allow us to see the insides and do some other things. We will get to that in a little bit. This does include the TPA 3255 Class D chip. Also supports aptX for the Bluetooth. Power output is stated at 102 watts per channel at 8 ohms or 120 watts per channel at 4 ohms with the included adapter. Now this has most of the needed features for a small mini amp that we've seen before. The swappable op amps are big for the SQ heads. It does come with a wireless remote, which is nice. And of course it does come with the power supply. Speaking of power supply, let's get this thing plugged in so we can test out some music. First with the power supply, then we're going to hook up the speakers left and right. 
These have bonding posts, so we will use the banana plugs here from our speaker wires, making it look all clean. We'll screw in the Bluetooth antenna here. Of course, then we'll plug it into the wall last of all. And then we're going to power it up and see what happens. When you push the button there, you push the volume encoder. It does have a click when you push it in. It comes on within about five seconds and allows you to go through the display modes. There are eight different display modes. Six of them are VU. One of them is a spectrum analyzer. And one of them is just an information type screen. I will go through those individually here coming up when I play back a song. As for the tone adjustments here, we do have bass and treble plus 10 minus 10 dB available variable for bass and treble. There's not a stated frequency of these, but it's probably 100 hertz and 10 kilohertz most likely. There's also an adjustment here for the front panel brightness. The default setting is all the way bright, which is where we left it. Now let's get the Bluetooth device hooked up here just by going into Bluetooth and it should pop up on your Bluetooth device as Ampapa D1. Let's get it connected and give it some sound test. TPA3255 is a great sounding Class D amplifier chip. We have seen this before in other amplifiers. And yeah, it again sounds really good here if you can't tell. realize a lot of you may be listening back on your cell phone speakers but if you do have high quality speakers during this segment you will get an idea of how this thing sounds and of course the front panel with those VU meters so cool I mean I'm just smiling the whole time and it sounds great too so how can you not smile This close-up shows the refresh rate and also the detail and clarity. We don't get a resolution of the screen, but man, it does look good. Now again, there are six different VU meter options here. I'm scrolling through them pretty fast, but you can see some of them only have one VU meter, some of them are two channels, and there's also a blue one kind of like Macintosh. And we have a spectrum analyzer mode as well, which we're going to show here and see how that works. Left speaker, right speaker, Just for fun and just for extra demo power here, let's plug in the preamp output and plug it into the Sunfire True Subwoofer Mark II and let's rattle the table a little bit. What you say? Okay, demo's good, but let's get down to the science. So let's turn on the amp dyno here and try the true output power. If you haven't seen these tests before, on the left is the output power in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right is the voltage of the dyno, which you can disregard because we have the dyno hooked up to a battery bank. We have the amplifier hooked up to 120 volt through the wall. Now let's try 8 ohms. It's rated 102 watts per channel. Let's find out what we get here. 1 kilohertz is the track. Each channel is loaded here on the dyno. What can we get? Can we get the 102 watts? Yes, we can. 
116 and 110. And don't worry about that six watt difference between the two channels. That is literally like 1% or less. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point of the amplifier. Should get a little bit more power than the previous test. And we do, 125 and 122. That is big power from a mini amp at eight ohms. Dynamic power sends a pulse track of one kilohertz into the amp. These TPA amps do not have a lot of dynamic power, but you can see here we're still around 120 watts per channel at eight ohms. Now at four ohms, it's rated 120 watts times two with the included power supply. Let's try certified test, which is up to 1% distortion. See if we can get that 120. Oh, easily. <laughs> we're in the mid 170s at four ohms. Now we'll try it uncertified, which again is to the clipping point of the amp. We should get a little bit more power. Let's see if we can beat that 175. And yeah, we're close to 180 per channel at four ohms, big numbers. Now we'll send the pulse track one kilohertz. This is the IHF 202 style tone. And there you go. We are busting 200 watts per channel, about 212 watts per channel average, nice. Here are all the results that we ran, plus the 2.6 ohm test, which we didn't show. And if you stick around to the very end of the video, I will try it at two ohms. We know the chip is rated for that, although this amplifier doesn't have ratings for that. And here is the thermal image, thanks to the FLIR. And of course, the side where the chip is and where the Rubicon cap is and where those resistors are, definitely where we're going to see the heat, but still not too bad overall. Now, the top of this amplifier has a glass panel which for me makes it very simple to show you what the internals look like. Don't have to take screws out and all that stuff. But there is another reason why you'd want to open this up, but we'll show that in a minute. But first off, you can see the internals here and also this Rubicon capacitor. It's a 2200 microfarad 63 volt that is for the rails. And let's look here. And we also have the NE5532Ps. These are the op amps, and those are, of course, swappable with other ones like the 2604, 2134, and the Muse 02, etc. I'm sure the Reddit forums will light up, and they'll tell you which ones sound the best. But for me, the ones that are included sound pretty dang good. Now, let's talk about pros and cons, things I like, things that could be better. First, the good stuff, VU display options, sweet, great sound quality. The Bluetooth 5.2 with aptX HD, a variable high-pass crossover to save your bookshelf speakers. Easy access to the op amps. We do love the TPA 3255 amp module. Very nice sounding. Binding posts on the back, very nice. Aux output and remote control. That's where the things that could be better. Again, these are my opinion, but the value at $200, eh, it's kind of close to being kind of expensive. The 12 volt trigger, not sure why they included that. And TRS, not optical or coaxial digital inputs. I'd rather have those. Would you need a 48 volt 10 amp power supply? Maybe, probably not though. RCA voltage input needed to be around 2 volts RMS to get the full output of this amp, which a lot of sources may not have. No gain volume on the pre-out, which would be nice. That way you could control your subwoofer from the remote. The glass top panel doesn't seem to have any magnets or anything with a metal ring to help hold it down. The sticker that's built on kind of helps hold it down, so that would be a nice addition as well. Overall, at the time of this video, I believe this is the best mini amp out there available to the 3255 chip, the VU meter displays, the preamp output, the wireless remote. This has most all the features that most people want. Thanks always for watching. Smash me a thumbs up, but there is more. I want to check and see if it has a turn off thump, so let's try that. All right, didn't hear any turn off thump. Let's try the turn on. It's not appear to have any turn on thump either. Bluetooth goes back immediately. Very nice. Will the Ampapa D1 run two ohm stereo? Let's try it one kilohertz. This is certified to 1% distortion. Okay, you saw it stopped around 150 or so and then jumped up to 189. This one shouldn't skip numbers. Let's see how warm it is. Not too bad. All right. 
241 and 215. So plenty of power here for the Ampapa D1. Let's try the Ampapa D1. Two ohms dynamic burst at one kilohertz. Let's see what we get. Busting 300 watts per channel. Look at that. 328 and 301 at 2 ohms.